Hi, Mark Sipp at Crocker Farm Auction. I'm here to discuss three exciting examples of stoneware made by the enslaved potter Dave in the Edgefield District of South Carolina. Many of you know who Dave is. Uh, many people know who Dave is who aren't even very interested in stoneware. His story is really fascinating. Uh, he was born about 1800 and he potted uh, for over uh, 45 years, which is remarkable. And what's even more remarkable is we have an, an entire body of work uh, from that time span. He started off working at the Pottersville Pottery of Abner Landrum sometime about 1820, and there's actually a piece dated 1821 made in Pottersville, which is just a mile from Edgefield Courthouse uh, in the Edgefield District of South Carolina uh, that's, that's attributed to Dave. So there's an example dated 1821 um, that has fairly strong, uh, a fairly strong attribution to Dave. But then we have all these other dated pots uh, from the 1820s all the way into the 1860s. Made it several different potteries that he worked at as an enslaved man. Of course, this potter is most well known for his incised couplets or poems that you see on his jars, and those are considered masterpieces of American folk art um, that are among the most desirable and most valuable pieces of American stoneware known. Um, starting off, we have this great early jug which has a, has a date that is significant to this potter. You can see it's incised April 18th, 1831. And it's significant to this potter because it was made at the Pottersville Pottery while Dave, uh, while, the, while the pottery was under the ownership of Dave's master Harvey Drake. So the Pottersville Pottery, as I said, was originally owned by Abner Landrum. Throughout the 1820s and into the 1830s, there were several different owners of that pottery site. And uh, by 1828, Abner Landrum had sold his stake to the Drake brothers, Harvey and Reuben Drake. Harvey Drake was Dave's owner. Uh, Harvey Drake was Dave's owner until his, Harvey Drake's own death in 1832. So Dave was actually owned by Drake from 1800, circa 1800 when he was born, to 1832. And this pot was made when the Pottersville Pottery was specifically under the ownership of the Drake family. So it's an exciting piece, and that, that's a very short window actually. It's only about 1828 to 1836 uh, that the Drakes owned this pottery site. Uh, from 1832 to 36, after um, uh, Harvey Drake had died, Reuben Drake owned the pottery. Um, so we have this exceptional early date, again only 10 years after the earliest date did Jug uh, attributed to Dave, which just says 1821 on it, and it has fairly strong attribution to, to that potter. But we have a full date in size, and then we have this incredible dotted punctate decoration, this cartouche, this border surrounding the date, which is highly unusual in Dave's work. Um, I'll talk to you a little bit later about the significance of punctates to Dave's body of work um, and how it relates to, to most of his vessels. But in this case, we have it used as a decorative technique. Very, very cool. The jug also sports a classic Dave stepped spout. So characteristic, characteristic of his work, it, you know, you would see this on his pieces even 30 years later. And the glaze is a, it's a wonderful two-tone glaze, which you see on early works from Pottersville. Um, and it's, it's a very desirable glaze treatment. Uh, you can actually see where it's a darker, heavier green glaze around the shoulder. with some wonderful drips. Look at this one right here. This is just fantastic on the back. Over a lighter ground. And so the ground is a, is a lighter olive color. And so we have this great two-tone effect. You can actually imagine this glaze melting and pouring and cascading down the shoulder of the jug as it was made. Another interesting feature about this piece is this impressed Roman numeral one or letter I at the base. 
almost certainly an eye with serifs on it. Uh, that relates to a lot of early examples from Pottersville and pieces made at the John Landrum Pottery, who is the, um, the brother of Abner Landrum. And I know I'm using a lot of names here so, and dates, so bear with me. Um, I'm trying to get it all in. But to have a Dave piece with a slave mark at the, at the base, what they call slave marks, these mysterious impressed marks at the base from early Edgefield District wares uh, is unusual. This piece survives in immaculate condition. It really is remarkable. We're talking about a piece that in a little over 10 years will be 200 years old. And it's essentially mint. It's very heavy because it's actually filled with the molasses that was used in it uh, sometime during the 19th century and it even has its old corn cob stopper. A very exciting recent discovery found last summer. Uh, moving along, we have this example. Now, from the Pottersville Pottery, Dave ended up being owned by Lewis Miles from 1840 to 43. And from 43 to 47, he was working at the John Landrum Pottery where this example was made. Um, John Landrum worked in Horse Creek Valley and uh, he had a uh, fairly successful pottery for a number of years. Um, in 1849, Dave would eventually be sold to his son, Benjamin Franklin Landrum. But Dave's work during this period is unusual. 1840s for Dave is an unusual time period. You don't see that many examples from this early time period. You can see it says at the top, October 13th, 1843. Very nice large date. And it has two slash marks. That's a classic Dave trait. That's one of his his markings that he used on his vessels that you'll see all the way um, into the 1860s. Typical of early Edgefield District wares, this has a very appealing light colored alkaline glaze and that two-tone effect is somewhat conveyed with these heavy drips at the base. Now moving on to punctates, you can see this example has six incised punctates on the back. While the jug I just showed you was using punctates as a decorative technique, by this period, the 1840s, these punctates are regularly being used by Dave as uh, a gallonage marking. So we have six dots, six incised punctates for six gallons. This is a six gallon vessel. Dave's work from the 1840s is fairly rare, as I said. Uh, this example survives in excellent condition, really has a great glaze to it. You can really see a nice flow to the surface. Another beautiful offering. Now, the previous jar was made by Dave at the John Landrum Pottery in Horse Creek Valley. As I said, from 1847 to 49, Dave worked for Benjamin Franklin Landrum, uh, who apparently had some notoriety as a very uh, difficult uh, master of slaves, somebody who was, who was a, a, a brutal owner um, and, and treated his slaves horribly. He only worked there for a brief period, 1847 to 49. From 49 into the 1860s, sometime around 1864, 65, Dave worked at the Lewis Miles Pottery, which was adjacent to uh, the Benjamin Franklin Landrum Pottery. And most of Dave's work, you will find, is from that time period, 49 uh, into the early 1860s. Examples from the late 1840s are fairly rare. Examples from the early 1860s are fairly rare as, as well. There's only a handful of examples from the 1860s known by Dave. Uh, 1858 seems to be his pinnacle year where he was dating his vessels and signing his vessels. And so that we have right here an example bearing a Dave date and signature. 
August 28th, 1858. You actually see the Potter's signature Dave right there. And during this time period, he's mixing punctates into the dates. So we have uh, Aug 28, period 1858. Um, and there's no TH after the, the day of the month. Um, he's, he started to uh, get into this habit of, of incising the names that way, uh, the dates that way. And um, you also see this great signature connecting to the G in August. So he's doing that nice little decorative flourish there. And as I said, during this time period, Dave was owned by Lewis Miles, and you'll see this mark. You'll see this mark uh, also from 1840 to 43, uh, but you'll most typically see this mark from uh, 1849 into the mid-1860s. And that is the initials of Lewis Miles, Dave's owner, during this period. During this period, you also see him incising things vertically, like this. Earlier works will tend to incise horizontally. Lastly, we have an incised X, which you see on a decent number of Dave pieces, particularly his later works. And that, like the two slashes that I showed you earlier on this uh, John Landrum jar, is one of Dave's mysterious markings that he would put on his pots. Um, this example has a very nice olive-colored alkaline glaze. And it's an exciting recent find. There's not too many fresh-to-the-market pieces of signed Dave Stoneware coming to market. Um, but we were contacted with this piece in late March or early April. Uh, we, were, we were told somebody had a, an example of Dave Pottery. A lot of times we get contacted with Dave Pottery and it's an Albany slip glazed piece made in the 1890s that um, has no signature or no uh, link to Dave's work whatsoever. However, we were excited to see this was actually a signed example. And it was purchased decades ago by a relative of the consigner, I believe her grandmother, uh, from an elderly lady, and it descended um, in her family. And we are uh, privileged to offer this a completely fresh to the market, new discovery for this sale. So let me line them up real quick. We have a nice run of Dave Potts spanning the early 1830s to the late 1850s. So about 25 years in production is represented here and three different pottery sites. It's tough to find this uh, grouping in a single auction uh, spanning this length of time in Dave's work. And we're very excited to offer these pieces in our July 20th, 15th anniversary sale.